Hey Weather Warriors, in this video we're going to be talking about the next uptick, upsurge of severe weather across the United States that I predict when it's going to happen, how strong, tornado potential, and much, much more. It's been very quiet, but things could change here, so stay tuned for that. But before we begin, if you're a weather enthusiast, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns, much more long range and educational than you would see on TV. And also guys, comment below, what's the largest hail you've ever seen? We'll go ahead and get some discussions going on in the comments and also follow me on Twitter. I just opened up a, an account for this channel and I'll be posting more frequent updates and exciting things there. So let's get right into it here. Now, we're going to first look at this diagram. I'm going to break this down, don't worry. But this is a special tool that I'm going to be using to, to forecast our uptake in severe weather. Now, you're looking at the current date, which is about right here. Now, you might have to zoom in, but this is essentially measuring the supercell composite parameter, which essentially means the likelihood for supercells, which usually produce hail, wind, and sometimes even tornadoes. They're going to be your, your strongest of storms in the world, usually. And what we're looking at is a supercell composite parameter. Now, the higher the number, obviously, colors, the higher the number, the more likely we're going to be, be getting these uh essentially a supercell environment and you can see it's very red out here so we're looking at the current date right here and this is going out to about june on the right side so this is june 19th and then this is right now so you know mid-may here and when you get these these are several different runs so these are different runs of the same cfs model okay so this goes several runs back several weeks back even and so you can see how the model on in March, it only came out to about now, but the current model goes all the way out to June. So that's kind of how that works. The model goes about four or five weeks in advance. So what we're looking at here is a huge uptick in the reds, and you can see a giant uptick in supercell composite uh, parameter as we head towards um, you know, late May into around mid-June, really. So it really is going to turn around the 15th or 14th, 15th or so, and it's really going to go up as we head towards late May and early June. So several runs indicating that. And uh, again, the CFS, that's only one model of many. Uh, you know, it's hit or, hit or miss sometimes, but it is a tool we use, and uh, it's very, very potent on that, on that look. Now, we're looking at the 500 millibar height anomaly, this is, uh, or excuse me, the 500 millibar heights. This is the GFS model. So three different, or several different runs of the GFS, several different variations. So it's an ensemble. We're kind of stacking things together. This kind of blends things out a little bit more. It's better for long range. We're looking at already here on Wednesday the 13th into Thursday the 14th. We got a trough out here. Now, this is much different than the, the pattern we've been seeing where it's very cold and the troughing's all out to the east, very cold in the east half of the United States and warm in the west. But there is some change happening, and I think it's going to happen around the, the 13th or so. You get a trough in the west. That's going to bring some flow out into the Midwest, central United States, southern U.S., and, and northern United States. That's going to cause storm systems at the surface. You're going to get little low pressure systems when you get that divergence. It's also going to cause wind shear for thunderstorms, okay, long-lived potentially supercells. If you look at the instability for Wednesday already, Thursday, Wednesday night, this is around 7 p.m., you can see this surge of instability all the way from Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, down into the core of Texas, Oklahoma, uh, in parts of Kansas and southern Nebraska. This has been very consistent at at least at showing a setup sometime Wednesday, Thursday across the plains, and then that will move east on Thursday. And you can see uh, the, the dew points, you know, your 60s, 70s here. There is some uh, uncertainty about moisture return up here. I don't know that you're going to get the moisture return in Nebraska and uh parts of South Dakota, but if it does reach up there, severe weather certainly possible up there with that jet stream. But anyway, you got a ton of moisture surging out of the Gulf, south winds, uh, you know, dry air behind it, dry line, got a cold front up there. There could be a, a severe weather setup in the plains on Wednesday with this type of look and that type of energy, the instability we're talking about. You know, as you go towards uh, Thursday here, we'll look at the uh, 
surface first, you can see that this cold front moves in Thursday the 15th and it's going to cause some lift as you head towards the central and southern plains into Missouri, Iowa, parts of Illinois. That could cause, you know, with that moisture convergence along that front, some uh, severe weather in the Midwest, eastern plains region as we head towards Thursday. And you can see the instability reflects that. The core of instability runs from southeast Nebraska through central Iowa. I think it's going to be a little bit farther south. Again, it's going to change quite a bit. But, uh, you know, that's where your instability is all the way out through Illinois. That would track eastward overnight into Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri. So this is going to be a, a time period where we're going to have to watch. The pattern will quiet down just a bit uh, between the 14th or between the 15th or so and maybe the 19th or so of May. But there has been some indication based off that the chiclets I was talking about, that CFS thing we talked about first, the CFS model, and then also the GEFS, which we're looking at. And there's been some consistent troughing here that has showed up on those models and even sometimes the CMC, which is the Canadian model, uh, around the 21st, and it just continues kind of off and on, but it will continue through, through June the way it looks. So that last week of May into the first week of June, there's also some other uh, things in the ocean that would indicate this as well. But there could be some troughing out west delivering some episodes of severe weather across the high plains from montana you're talking montana wyoming colorado new mexico out through texas oklahoma kansas nebraska the dakotas all the way out through the midwestern region uh, there is indications of more ridging or zonal activity not just really this model but some other indications out in the east coast but i would really uh, think that your uh, your midwest northern plains and especially high plains could be in for some shows here as we head towards later in the month here. You can look at the uh, uh, mixed layer cape by the GEFS around the 22nd. You can see it's uh, pretty high there in the southern plains. Wouldn't be surprised to see that lift north. But we'll have to watch that. And then as we head towards, uh, well, this is the this is going to be the CFS for the, around the same time period. So. You can see that troughing there. That would actually indicate more activity out in the Midwestern region. But nonetheless, there's there's troughing a little bit further to the west than what we're seeing right now, which would set the stage for more severe weather farther to the, uh, the west here in the Midwest, Central Plains, and the High Plains. As you head towards the 28th of May, this is going to be uh, the CFS. You can see more troughing again to the east. This would bring activity again all across much of the plains. This would eventually sweep to the east. The, the general look here is when you get that troughing out there, you typically will get periods of severe weather. It's not always going to be the same place every day. They're going to change quite a bit. But the type of pattern we're seeing is a little bit more progressive than last year. Remember last year we had a big trough out here, and it just created a several days worth of severe weather in the kind of the central southern portion of the United States. There's a lot more jumping around with this pattern, so I would suspect it's going to be a lot more variable across the Midwest, the High Plains, even the Southern Plains, out into the uh, Central Plains. So it's going to kind of jump around a lot, but nonetheless, you're going to see probably a sharp uptick in activity for the last 10 days of May, obviously the 14th and 15th as well, and then the first potentially week or so of June as well is you look at the height anomalies. So this is measuring the height anomalies, like are they above or below average? And you can see below average height anomalies here in the west that would indicate, again, more troughing than usual for this time of year, which, again, you usually get severe weather, but this is indicating a little bit more than, uh, than average around this time period. Obviously, right now, we're much below average severe weather as of the first week or two of May. But again, the second half, I would say, 10 days of May, potentially above average here. So uh, very, very interesting signs pointing to that. And obviously it's been a record tornado season so far, at least in April. Been a very quiet drop off, but we could see that ramp up as we head towards, again, the 14th, 15th, and especially the last 10 days of May into the first week or so of June. So stay tuned. I'll be definitely making some live streams. So if you're uh, into that, Subscribe below. We'll probably be doing some live storm chasing eventually as well across the plains here as the uh, season starts to ramp up. So 
Again, subscribe below and also share this with a friend and comment below what's the largest hail you've ever seen. I'm going to try to be making some more updates here. We're working on some special projects for the channel, so stay tuned for that. But again, until then, I'm probably going to be posting a couple times a week. We've really got to try to finish these projects. But as we head towards later in the month, we'll be definitely posting more regularly. So hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll see you soon.